First of all, what is a graph? A graph contains vertices and edges, where vertices model certain objects of interest, and edges model relationships between these objects. For example, you can use a graph to represent a social network where the vertices represent people and edges represent relationships between people. And there are many questions you might want to ask about such a graph, such as, what are good communities of people who mostly know one another? Or what's a set of people who share the same interests or hobbies? And these are questions that you can answer using graph analytics. There are many other applications of graphs out there. For example, graphs are used in many modern recommendation systems that are deployed on social networks or e-commerce platforms. Graphs are also used for fraud detection in financial networks, for spam detection on the internet, as well as for drug discovery. And graphs form a foundation of many machine learning pipelines, including uh, in the applications listed on this slide here. And therefore, it's important to understand what graphs are and understand how we can efficiently process them. So today, graphs are becoming very large. The largest publicly available graph is this common crawl graph, which represents just a small fraction of the websites on the internet, but it already contains over 128 billion edges. There are even larger graphs out there that are proprietary, containing on the order of trillions of edges. In addition to be, being massive, many real-world graphs are also rapidly changing. For example, on the Twitter network, there are about 500 million new tweets every day. And on the internet, there are over 500,000 new websites being created every day. And these events correspond to changes in the underlying graph. So in order to process these massive graphs that are also dynamically changing, um, our work focuses on designing parallel and dynamic graph solutions. So we use parallelism to take advantage of the multiple processing units on almost all of today's machines. We design dynamic algorithms that avoid doing unnecessary work on updates. For example, if our graph only changes by a little bit, it's probably wasteful to recompute on the entire graph from scratch. And dynamic algorithms is going to help us avoid this. We also work on designing high-level programming frameworks to make it easier for non-experts to write their own parallel graph programs. So we've developed a collection of multi-core algorithms for many fundamental graph problems out there. And we've shown that our algorithms can scale to this common crawl graph, which is the largest publicly available graph I mentioned earlier. Prior to our work, existing solutions use distributed memory clusters or supercomputers to process graphs of this scale. But we were able to show that by designing good algorithms and introducing uh, several important optimizations, we can actually fit this graph on a single multi-core machine and run many interesting graph algorithms on it quickly. So here are the results for one of the problems that we looked at called k-core decomposition. And here we're comparing the running time of our multi-core solution versus the state of the art at that time, which was a distributed memory solution. So our multi-core solution uses a single 72-core machine with a terabyte of RAM, and it takes about half the time as the distributed solution, which uses 256 machines, each with 32 cores and over 16 terabytes of RAM. So we see that we're faster. Um, in terms of absolute, absolute times, but we're orders of magnitude faster on a per core and per terabyte basis because we're using significantly fewer resources. And the reason for these speed ups is first due to having better algorithms that do less work overall and have more parallelism, as well as being able to take advantage of the lower communication overheads on multi core machines compared to distributed memory. The results here are for static graph algorithms where we assume that the graph doesn't change. However, we've also designed many parallel dynamic algorithms for graph problems, including for k-core. So our dynamic k-core algorithm is able to achieve over 100x speed up compared to the static algorithm where we're processing large graphs and only a modest portion of the graph is changing. We've also done work on designing programming frameworks to make it easier for programmers to write parallel code because writing efficient parallel code is notoriously difficult. And it becomes even more challenging when we're talking about graph processing. In order to get good performance with graph processing, you have to apply many different optimizations. And this is because most modern hardware is not uh, designed for graph computations. However, the best set of optimizations to use 
depends on various factors. It depends on the type of graph that you're processing, whether it's a power law degree distributed graph like a social network, or if it's a high diameter, uh, low degree graph like a transportation network. The best set of optimizations also depends on the type of algorithm you're implementing, whether it's an algorithm that processes the entire graph on every iteration, or if it's an algorithm that only looks at a small part of the graph on every iteration. And finally, the best set of optimizations depends on the type of hardware you're targeting, whether it's a multi-core CPU, a GPU, a distributed cluster, or a domain-specific accelerator. So determining the best set of optimizations is actually a pretty challenging task, and we designed the Graphit domain-specific language to make this task easier. So in Graphit, we have a separate algorithm language and an optimization language. The algorithm language just specifies what we want to do at a high level, whereas the optimization language specifies how we want to optimize different parts of our algorithm. So a programmer can just write the algorithm once, and then they can tweak parameters in the optimization language in the search for the best set of optimizations. And Graphit also provides an auto-tuner to make this process of finding the best set of optimizations even easier. We've also designed a framework for the streaming graph setting. And in this setting, we have a stream of updates as well as a stream of queries. So the stream of updates um, are modifying, uh, modifying parts of the graph, whereas the stream of queries are asking questions about the graph, such as whether two vertices are reachable from one another, whether the graph is connected, what's the clustering coefficient of a particular vertex, and so on. And the goal of streaming graph processing is to make sure that the answers to the queries we get are serializable, meaning that they correspond to some sequential ordering of the queries and updates that are happening concurrently. And this is important in that it allows us to reason about our solutions and understand what's going on in our graph. So we designed the Aspen framework for this purpose. Aspen is able to support concurrent queries and updates with low latency while also guaranteeing serializability. And the key idea behind Aspen is the design of a new compressed fully functional tree data structure, which we use to represent the graph. And this data structure allows us to create lightweight snapshots that the queries can work on while the updates are happening. And because these snapshots are immutable, um, the queries don't have to worry about the updates uh, modifying the graph. So in conclusion, there are a lot of important applications out there that require graph analytics. Large and dynamic graphs pose many challenges, but also brings about many exciting research directions. Thank you.